Hi guys, welcome back to Game Muscle Videos. In this video, we're going to be checking out iRacing's latest update, uh, which brings HTC Vive or Open VR support to the simulator. Now, uh, iRacing have been really good actually as a company in terms of VR support, and they already supported the Oculus Rift, and prior to that, they supported the DK2, and are one of the uh, the simulation companies that have actually supported all the VR headsets from the get-go and tend to do it pretty fast. I think Live for Speed probably is, is the winner when it comes to supporting the headsets first, but then iRacing tend to follow on after Live for Speed pretty closely. Now, what's nice, as I say, with this being open VR support, is that if you've got a uh, one of the other headsets that uses open VR, not just HTC Vive, I think Razer do one, and there'll probably be a whole bunch of Chinese headsets coming out in the in the short-term future that will use open VR, then those should work with iRacing as well. Though you'll want to check that the specific headset and... Uh, your mileage may vary. Now to uh, give it a little bit of a test, we have been doing some racing and it's worth pointing out that iRacing is in week 17 at the moment. When they roll out a patch, they have a sort of week for doing a bit of mess about racing. It's not really that serious um, and there's not as many events going on. It's more just a way for iRacing to iron out any problems they might have before they go into their official next uh, season. So we're on week 17, but I'm gonna jump into a test session with the Mazda MX-5 Cup car at Laguna Seca. Uh, and to launch with the with the uh, OpenVR, with the HTC Vive, all you need to do is click, uh, well, have your headset plugged in, make sure everything's turned on, make sure Steam VR is running, and then just click, uh, click on either launch race, or in this case, we're just gonna test the car on track. So you click on that, and it should pop up on the screen any minute, there we go, it's loading up. And it will come up with a dialog box saying, uh, open VR headset detected. Start full screen on the uh, HMD's display. So we'll click yes, of course, because we do want to do that. I'm going to make sure the headset's uh, sort of at head height whilst it loads up. Um, they, obviously, you can bind a button to reset the head headset position, but I find if you just put your headset next to your face whilst it's loading up, it will be vaguely right when it comes to uh, doing the menus. So give it a chance to load. Now, one thing I have noticed, if you do have the headset on whilst it's loading, unfortunately the load screens do have quite a bit of stutter in iRacing. So you do find that it's quite uncomfortable if you move your head whilst it's loading. But once it's actually loaded and you're in the game, the stutter goes away and it's, and it's pretty comfortable to use, especially the, the actual menus. Here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the view on OBS from uh, from the window capture, which is currently well, it's doing a display capture moment. I'm going to switch it to my display mirror. So we'll just do that. Before we put the headset on our head, it's worth noting that, of course, I'm uh, cropping the capture image uh, so it looks all right on YouTube in uh, 16 by nine aspect ratio. Of course, on the VR headset and in virtual reality, the image sort of surrounds you around about 120 degrees of your field of view, uh, which then means when I record it and crop it and have it set up for YouTube, the field of view will look as if I'm driving with the wrong field of view. So I think that's caught a few people out. We've got quite a few comments with people going, why are you driving with such a high field of view? It's just the nature of if you squash uh, the field of view of VR onto a, onto a small image, it will look distorted. So. Popping the headset on. I'm not going to bother putting the headphones on at the moment because I'll probably start shouting. Is the headphones on the Vive isolate you and uh, you know the earbud headphones uh, and make you feel as if you're not talking loud enough? So looking at the menus, uh, everything's really nice and clear. Of course, one of the advantages with the uh, the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, as well as uh, presumably any of the newer headsets, is that the resolution is a lot better than with the uh, the DK2 and older virtual reality uh, head mounted displays. Now, of course, the, the resolution still has room for improvement. You can see screen door and there are pixels. But um, for those of us that have gone through f from uh, even pre-DK1, it's, uh, it's a really nice improvement using these consumer headsets. Now, in terms of the menus, it's, uh, it's quite, they are quite comfortable to use with the, um, with the Vive, but I have noticed that if you move your head up and down, left and right, 
that on some views it doesn't seem like the translation of the head is is proper uh, fully properly implemented in that sometimes when you tilt up there seems to be a bit of forwards and backwards motion which uh, I think can make some people feel a little bit motion sick. Also some of the trackside cameras are at sort of weird angles um, that again might make people feel a little bit a little bit off and might make those sensitive to motion sickness feel a bit motion sick but for the most part uh, it's actually quite comfortable and really nice to use. Now when it comes to actually using the menus in VR, again they do benefit from the increased resolution of the uh, of the Vive and you can see all the settings, uh, exactly what's going on, it's exactly the same menus that you would get on your, on your, um, you know, on your 2D screen. There is an option, there's a shortcut to increase and decrease the size of these menus and also the black boxes and other UI elements. Um, I'll put that in the video description because I can't remember what the shortcut is off the top of my head. But as you can see here, we can go through all the settings uh, and change them exactly as you would on a screen. Though, uh, unless you know intuitively where your buttons are, you might want to do this with your headset off, looking at the uh, the, the mirror view on on the uh, on the monitor to set that up. Now, in terms of the graphics and the graphics performance, um, I have noticed that it does vary from track to track and at the moment certain uh, pit zones and grandstands have quite a large frame rate variance compared to the rest of the track because obviously those those parts of the uh, the track just have a lot more detail just just because of the nature of race tracks so you, what you'll need to do if you're going to use in v, play, play in vr is do some testing um join a server that has other cars in it so you so you've got a um sort of 10, 15 cars there, or a number of cars that would represent something similar to a race situation, and see what your frame rate is across the entirety of the track. Because in VR, it's really important that you don't go below the 90 frames a second. And uh, if you do, you'll, you know, you'll start to notice things like stutter, and you might get some ghosting effects. So it's really important to sort of turn the graphics down to make sure that you always get a constant 90 FPS. Um, I'm running with a i7, the recent i7, uh, 6700K, with a GTX 970 graphics card. I would have thought, now I haven't tested this, but I would have thought if you've got a newer graphics card, like a, a 980 or a, a 1070, 1080, or you know any of the newer graphics cards from what I've got, you probably could put most of the graphics on full, most of the track details on full, and still hit that 90 uh, that 90 uh, frames a second required for the Vive. Now, of course, the Vive does have a mode called reprojection, and SteamVR has a mode called reprojection, which uh, when you drop below the 90 frames per second, the uh, the headset will uh, go to 45 frames per second and then reproject the image, and. It, it's, with driving simulators, reprojection is not actually that bad because you tend to have your head still most of the time. You see there, we've just dropped, we've dropped from 90 and we've gone into the reprojection mode. Um, with iRacing as it is now, it doesn't seem to be doing the reprojection mode perfectly and uh, the, the frame rate, rather than it going from 90 to 45 sometimes the frame rate will will dr drop down according to frame rate counting you do notice stutter um so i'm not quite sure if that's a, an issue with their implementation of steam vr at this point in time uh, but it does seem to operate differently from uh, other driving sims where reprojection kicks in for example uh, project cars or uh, Assetto Corsa, and I think I think iRacing might uh, there might be something they can do to tweak that. It might be to do with their implementation of OpenVR. It's also worth double checking in the menu that you have set the frame rate to uncapped, because by default, even when you load up with the um, HTC Vive headset, by default you uh, you can have the frame rate either on the battery mode or just uh, set to sort of 60 or so and then it will lock the frame rate to 60 which of course is not what you want for VR. Now in terms of the actual experience with the with the HTC Vive uh, of course it's, it's VR and, and VR seems or has been a really good fit for driving simulators I mean you really do feel like you're sat inside the vehicle 
and actually at the location and uh, with iRacing having its pretty high detailed laser scan tracks with uh, and one of the things that iRacing do really well is that they actually put a lot of effort into the trackside details in terms of very faithfully recreating the objects and the hills and the, the landscape outside the track which in VR I think you notice and, and pick up in VR and that does give iRacing tracks a very natural feel to them and you can appreciate it in VR because you tend to more so than when I've played on screens you tend to you tend to look around left and right I've just put my headphone in my ear so I can hear what the car is doing so I was just driving deaf there hopefully we'll start changing gear at the right time now uh, other aspects of iRacing's VR implementation you might notice that I've not got hands on the steering wheel there seems to be a bug at the moment where sometimes the the hands don't move with the steering wheel which in VR is is very immersion breaking but also even when the hands are moving with the steering wheel their actual the rotation amount before the animation stops dead isn't particularly uh it isn't that far it's only sort of you know a quarter of a turn and then often the animation will stop so again that's the kind of thing which which breaks immersion in our race it's a shame that they haven't changed that i think that was it's been like that since the uh since the dk2 support in our race so i always drive with the uh with the hands off and just just have the steering wheel Having said that, I, I think you sort of you do get used to just having the steering wheel. And normally, when you're actually in a race and focused on the racing, you're not really looking at the steering wheel. You're sort of looking at the uh, the rev counter, and you're looking ahead at what's going on. You know, looking into into the next corner and and what's you know what's coming up. As you should be if you're you know if you're driving a real car, you're not supposed to be just glued on your cockpit. You're supposed to be looking ahead. To the next corner and uh, focusing on the flow of the vehicle. Now, one thing that iRacing does do really well, though, is they've got proper mirrors. And again, it's, it was one of the first simulators to do proper 3D mirrors. Now, the actual image on the mirror is 2D. I think I don't think it's got stereo on the mirror that I can see, but um, it has the head tracking assigned with it. So when I move my head. the actual image on the mirror moves if that makes sense which seems like a small thing but it does actually add a lot to the immersion but also adds a lot to the functionality of the simulator because you'll find when if you've got someone behind you the way we're in the wrong gear for the hill the way you um you know when you look at them and you move and you're moving around in the mirrors this is drunk driving with game of muscle here the way you look around in the mirrors having the actual proper mirrors operate like it would a real car means you can eliminate your blind spot just by moving forwards or by moving your head left and right and you can get a far better idea as to where the car behind you is especially if they're trying to be sneaky and do some moves on you and uh, we sort of talked about this recently in uh, our live for speed video because live for speed is the only other driving simulator that has the proper mirror support at this point in time yeah, I don't think they are stereo. They're just, it is a 2D image, but it just does the head tracking. But to be honest, they feel very natural and they, they look like real world mirrors. You don't tend to notice in real life, you know, when you're driving a real world car, when you look at the mirror, you don't tend to notice it being a, a 3D, you know, a stereo image in a mirror anyway, just because of the field of view and the, the distortion on the actual mirror surface. So, um,. Aside from that, it's pretty much, and a lot of these things, as I say, were already supported in iRacing when they had the uh, the DK2 version. So this is mostly just a case, and, and the, the Oculus Rift version, this is mostly just a case of them adding in open VR support. Um, aside from that, it's just a case that now, now those of you with a Vive or open VR headsets can now play iRacing. Now, one thing I have found that's been quite useful is recently we, we added the uh, button box onto the rig, uh, and then setting that up to you know control the black box settings. And in iRacing, it's got quite a uh, robust black box system which has all your different settings on it, 
and they've also got a radio system where you can talk to other drivers on the grid and choose which channel you're on and also again with the Vive because of its high resolution that's a lot more clear but with the bottom box it's really nice that even in VR you can have your view sort of obscured I can't obviously see my hands but you can reach out and still access those options and with iRacing because of the way they've designed the uh, the black box they call it because of the way they've designed it you can sort of access everything in a, in a relatively intuitive way even if you can't see anything now I might try and do uh, let's like speed things up a bit I'm just dawdling at the moment as we go around here one of the things I always say with VR is that just it really does increase the the sense of um, the sense of speed when driving and it does make it a lot easier to be sort of subtle with the input so you, you feel the effect of the brake through the visuals you know you, the, the visuals are more pronounced because of the wider field of view and the stereo so you feel the effect of the brake a lot more than you might do on a on a single screen or a smaller triple screen setup those of you with a ginormous projector screen or ginormous triple screen that has a similar field, field of view to VR you you know you're getting the same information so uh, other than the lack of stereo it might not be that much of a of a difference <laughs> I'm driving so bad but I one thing I've found having done a couple of races now in in iRacing um, is that I the way that iRacing does its force feedback is it's more of a sort of literal this is what's going through the steering column. The, the simulator doesn't really give you feel as to how much grip the tyres have or the, the loading of the vehicle outside of what is going through the steering column. Now that's great for people that like a really sort of um, pure and sometimes sharp column feel which in many ways uh, you know can feel quite believable as I'm sure it would feel in a, in a real race car but because in because most of us driving uh, simulators don't have motion rigs uh, it can make it tricky to have a feel for, for what the tires are doing or stuff that you'd normally feel through your bottom if you've got a motion rig or a uh, sim vibe setup or you know a good setup that conveys the tire grip which you can get that information out of the simulator then it's not a problem so uh, what I have found though playing our racing if I play it with a VR headset because the visuals are so much more pronounced I can drive from the visuals more so than I can on a screen so it almost it makes up a little bit for the lack of what iRacing communicates through the steering wheel so for those of you that are sort of more used to uh, other simulators that might convey things through the wheel more so than the visuals trying iRacing in VR might be a, a good idea and uh, I certainly find I, I don't really enjoy playing iRacing on a screen but I can I find it reasonably enjoyable in VR it makes it it makes it enjoyable enough for me to actually drive it in VR compared to on a screen if you're driving wide down the grass well I say grass we're in the we're in the desert here so there is no grass Now I do find another effect of, of VR is that because it isolates you so much, outside of the immersion that you get from this, you know, the head tracking and the screen actually being on your face, because it isolates you, again, that really sort of impacts your, your feeling of being at the location. I'm just laughing at my driving through here. I can see, uh, I can imagine everyone face palming. With this uh, MX-5, you really do sort of... And I think a lot of cars in our race, it's just the nature of the physics. You have to sort of line them up very much before you go into the, into the corner and uh, then ride that line through the corner. There's not much mid-corner adjustment that you can do. So, we'll try and behave ourselves.
But if you live with other people, <laughs> if you have a partner, you have to watch out that you don't uh, make them feel abandoned. Because you put your VR headset on, you'll do a race. And I race in races normally, it depends what series it is, but they can go from being a sort of well in this week 17 there could just be seven to ten minute sprint races but you can have races that are either 15 or so laps 20 laps but you can also be doing races that are 50 60 minutes plus and if you live with other people they'll just feel like you've abandoned them because you've, you're completely isolated with your headset on your face and your headphones in you won't hear anything outside of what's going on your in your virtual reality But I think that pretty much covers the uh, OpenVR implementation in iRacing at a basic level. What I'm going to be doing, and what we've already started to do, is we're streaming iRacing, and we're doing, um, we are doing online races and uh, talking as we drive. So if you've got any questions, make sure you uh, join us on Twitch. On uh, it's Game of Muscle on Twitch. I, I think it's just Game of Muscle. It might be Game of Muscle videos on Twitch. I think it's Game of Muscle on Twitch. I'll put a link to it in the video description. And then if you've got any questions or you just want to shout at us and say that we're bad at driving or you know just just be disgruntled at us, you can go there and do it live and we'll respond to you. Um, of course, if you want to uh, keep up to date with what we're doing on the channel here. You know, virtual reality, driving simulators, and just games that I that I really enjoy. Sort of more serious games, <laughs> serious games. That's an oxymoron. But that's what we tend to play on the channel. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button and also like this video. But uh, until next time, let's just uh, pull over here. Let's practice. It doesn't matter. Until next time, thanks for watching this. I hope that gave you an overview. Goodbye. First built in 1969 and then upgraded with its trademark alien grip strips 30 years later in 1999, the Paul Ricard track has become one of the most popular test venues, host to multiple Formula 1 Grand Prix, and more recently the European Le Mans series.